good. Wow. Okay. All right. You guys uh, ready for this? Yeah, we're ready. Ready is, oh, somebody from <clears throat> England. Minneapolis. Cool. Okay. Manchester. Nice. Yeah. All right. Hey, guys. Welcome to our um, VizDev and Art Direction meetup. Uh, Armand, Jill, you've been with us before. Uh, we've done this once before. Uh, but this is going to be mostly a Q&A from my understanding. Uh, but before we do that, I would like for the four of you to introduce yourselves to everyone here and tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, we'll start with Jill. Hi, um, I'm Jill Daniels. I, uh, <clears throat> art director, visual development artist. Uh, I've worked for a lot of different studios. I've kind of had the pleasure of working for most studios by now. Um, and, uh, did a lot of time at Disney, did 10 years there, um, known well for my um, working on Phineas and Ferb art directing that show. Uh, lately, I art directed Infinity Train, uh, book one and book two. And currently, um, I did a little this dev um, for the feature unit over at Netflix and then have moved on to do some uh, visual development for the Disney development team. And I like development a lot. So I've been working um, with a guy named Chris Perry from Fit Films, and that's been using Unreal Engine. And so I've kind of gotten my feet wet with that this year, and I am really loving that. It's really cool. And, um, and then also working on a preschool project that is interesting to develop because it's like multi-disciplined. So it uses, it's going to be using um, some stop motion and uh, regular uh, like 3D um, plus like it's, it's it's kind of got everything going on it on in it so that's that's kind of a fun project. Um, uh, I grew up in Alaska, came to California, um, went to Art Center and uh, and stayed because I love it here. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that said, I'd love to turn it over to uh, introduce my fellow uh, hyper accomplished um, people here. Um, how about Armand? Do you want to go on? Oh, okay. Uh, I was hoping Sona. I thought Sona was going to... Oh, Sona. <laughs> ladies first. Sona. Beautiful, yeah. talented Sona. Let's, let's go with <laughs> Sona Hong. Hi, um, I'm Sona Hong. And uh, I'm a visual development artist at Sony right now, working on um, the Hotel Transylvania 4 movie, and that's super fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, I've been there for, um, I mean, I don't remember how to do time, but I think eight years. <laughs> and before that, I was in TV animation, uh, a lot like Jill, about, you know, having had a lot of experience in a lot of different studios, which is always so fun. Um, also at Disney, at Nickelodeon for eight years, um, uh, art directing and background painting there. And I'm a Southern California native and working and living out of Los Angeles. <clears throat> Yay. Yay. <laughs> oh, am I next? Okay. Um, <laughs> my name is Armand Serrano. Um, I grew up in Manila in the Philippines. I moved here in, uh, in the 90s. And so I'm a production designer, art director, biz dev, um, specializing in environment design. Um, I work with, um, you know, I work with, with Disney, uh, Sony, uh, Marvel. I'm working right now with Skydance Animation and, and Sunrise Studios. Um, uh, what else? Oh, I also work in games. I work. Uh, I did work for Riot, for Blizzard, uh, for Blur, uh, Niantic um, games. So, so yeah, uh, I've been in the industry for a while. Um, I don't want to say how long anymore, <laughs> uh, but it's been a while. So, but I'm glad to be here. You know, with Jill, Asana, and Jason. So, thank you guys for um, for joining us today, Jason. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Jason Kalowski, um, originally from New Jersey. Um, I'm a production designer and art director. <clears throat> um, done quite a bit in uh, live action with miniatures, um, but also um, I do a lot of stop motion animation work. So I um, um, spent quite a few years working on a show called Tumbley for Amazon. Um, 
did some work on Adventure Time. Uh, lately, I've been past couple of years working on a some IP uh, bit of IP called the Tiny Chef Show, uh, which has just been mostly on social media. Um, and uh, we just um, relocated and just moved to Manchester, England, to start um, <clears throat> filming a show out here for Nickelodeon. And um, been here for two and a half weeks and getting over the jet lag and ready to get to work. Awesome. Thank you for, for joining us today. Um, we already have some Q&A, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump into it. Um, I'm just going to let whoever wants to answer this question go. Uh, the first question is, what does a production designer do and what does a visual development artist do? Good question. question. Anybody <laughs> wants to go first? <laughs> I'll launch a little bit. Um, okay. So I, I usually think of, um, I mean, there's a lot of different hats on that. A lot of times as an art director, you do do some visual development. Um, I think of visual development as it's where you do like the initial problem solving, <laughs> where you're coming up with something that inspires, you're, 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 you're kind of opening the box to just really dream big. And um, for whatever the story is really holding, whether the asset is like a character or an environment. Um, and, uh, and then art direction, you can, you, sometimes you're called to do that as an art director too, but an art director has a little more responsibility in crewing up a team and managing a team and breaking down that story into like actual assets and a little more having to do with budget and, and really, making it work so that that to me is a like a broad characterization of of, of what that's about yeah to add to that um i'm doing visual development now um and it's supporting the vision of the production um designer and the art director um and the and the vision of the movie and um going everywhere from being in development where we're first doing very loose sort of even finding the tone of the movie, the finding the color script and helping to find that um, to doing production work with the characters and the environment and props as we go further into production, like Jill was saying. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, to, to add to that too, um, you know, in the studio, um, production designer and art director, th those two guys are like Batman and Robin. You always see them walking around the hallways. <laughs> They're inseparable. Uh, basically, um, visual development is the entire pool of, of this, you know, development artists. Sometimes we call them concept arts. Um, and, and the visual development pool is divided into two. You have the character designer or character artist and you have environmental artists. The character artist, they have a character, the main character designer, which is actually the art director for character. And most of the time, what you call the art director is the art director for environment. And the two of them are being overseen by the production designer. The production designer basically is the, um, is the, uh, the creative arm of the director. So if the director has a vision, um, the production design is the one to be able to manage it with it with the creative team and the art director like what Jill and Sana said you know they're more like into uh, the workflow uh, making sure um, that everybody follows what has been said by what has been set by the production design and the uh, and the art director hey, Jason I don't know did you want to add anything to that I, I think that's pretty well covered. It's really interesting to me because it's, it's a bit of a different world from mm -hmm. um, where, where, where I live, but, um, but sim similar realm, uh, um, you know, right now we're doing visual development for uh, what this show is going to become. So I'm working with um, some concept artists and uh, some character designers to kind of flesh out a few things, but um, as production designer, I mean, I've already, you know, kind of laid out the world and uh, and this is just adding to it so yeah, it's just for me that's part of my team to help me kind of um lay out this entire world and you know what all the details and all what all the characters are going to look like so um yeah very cool uh this next question is really interesting uh 
what brushes do you use? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. The next, <laughs> the next question is, uh, uh, next question is coming from uh, someone who's actually already an art director for TV animation, but they want to make the transition into doing art direction for feature. Uh, what are the key differences between doing art direction for TV and doing art direction for feature? Um, uh, do you mind if I answer the question? Go ahead. Please do. So, yeah, so uh, from what I understood, uh, I had TV experiences uh, prior to me joining feature animation a long time ago. That's my first. So I have a little bit of understanding on TV. Um, but most of um, my experience um, is, in, is in feature. I believe there, there's, a, there's an overlap on both, of course. Uh, design is design. If you're a good designer, if you have a top-notch, you know, skills, those are both, uh, those are uh, usable uh, for both, uh, whether it's TV or features. In TV, it's more episodic. Actually, it's, it's weird now. Now there's, there's no such thing too much about TV. It's more like streaming, right? Uh, so that's like the hybrid, it's in the middle. But I think in features, uh, number one, features is spend more time in developing the story and working out, developing the characters. Uh, it takes five years, right? Uh, average of five years, or four to five years to finish a feature. So you have a lot of time to dabble really deep into um, the story development. Um, and also working out the, the visual development for the looks. Uh, for TV, um, some, I, I believe some have a lot of time at the, at the front end. Some of them have less time at the front end but it's more episodic, I believe. So um, in, in features, um, I think there's uh, more opportunity to, to stay in one, let's say I'm not just talking about location, there's more opportunities to stay in, in a location. So in a location, you flesh it out more, um, you, you see more development in a particular shot um, because, there's, um, because of the time, uh, there's a little bit more time to develop that. Um, I think there's a little, and, and Jill and, and, and um, the other artists here probably could say more about TV, but I, I believe in TV, um, you can see more stylized, uh, highly stylized um, artworks are supposed to, uh, in, in features, what I've been seeing the trend in feature animation, you, if, if we're gonna put numbers on it, um, it feels like the general, um, the average percentage of stylization would be 30% stylized and 70% real. You know, if you, if you watch Disney or Warner Brothers, uh, most of the movies that you see in animation uh, fall into that category. But in TV, you can explore, you can get crazy uh, with every kind of stylization um, you can have. So anyway, I'm going to pass it on to my colleagues here and, and they can add more to that. Um, if I could jump in, uh, I started off in TV and from my experience, I don't know, maybe maybe things have changed. Um, production design and art direction was sort of lumped into one role, whereas I feel like that's broken out more in feature. Those are two separate roles. Um, and so that was a, a change when I went into feature realizing, oh, okay, that, pipe, that part of the pipeline was already different. Um, and so I went from art directing in TV, background painting, then art directing, and then uh, went into feature. And um, like Armand was saying, you know, um, having the schedule be a little bit different and developing your work a little bit differently um, has a lot to do with the time frame and the timeline that you have. Um, <clears throat> but there's also a lot of differences um, in that pipeline, in the production pipeline. There are a lot of things that are um, overlapping, uh, like you were saying also earlier about a lot of the skill sets still carry over, but some of the terminology is different. And so <laughs> you know, when I first changed over, I was doing a lot of Googling like um, lighting key versus key lighting, you know, just some of the, some of the vernacular is different. And I, I think I even got, you know, um, Maya for dummies, you know, <laughs> I realized that had nothing to do with my part of the job, but still, you know, yeah, it's just pipeline and 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 uh, and a lot of the vocabulary that's different. Um, so that's been my experience so far, and I haven't um, had the experience of art directing or going into production design on the feature part yet. Uh, but even in the, as a viz dev artist, seeing uh, 
how that all sort of works and from my experience from TV to feature, seeing again, the similarities as well as the differences, it's, there's a good mix of both. Jill, Jason, do you guys have anything to add to that? Um, I think I could say that, I think that um, what's interesting is as the time's going by, I think that um, the, what's considered TV and what's considered features with how streaming has been coming into play in the last you know, few years, it's the boundaries are really blurring basically. Um, you know, cause the budget for TV shows now can, can be as much as a, a feature for some of them. They're, they're immense. And the time, you know, that people take, you know, Del Toro's doing basically, you know, TV, you know, so I, I think that, that, that the talent and, you know, what, what we're seeing about the differences um, are a little, are a little blurry now. So, um, yeah, I think that that is a kind of an interesting new place to, to be in nowadays. So I haven't worked as much in the features. I've worked some. Um, and I think that for me, the, the biggest differences were there was a, a lot more, I mean, than in any feature I was a part of, I did a little time in, um, DreamWorks features and, a little bit stuff with Sony, not much, and a little bit with um, with Netflix. But it was like there's just a lot more time that's taken, you know, with like you know, like just to have like the meeting, you know, have meetings of you know like the movement of a finger, you know, like there's a lot more time spent on each little part of it, which is an awesome kind of luxury that you get up front. TV. Um, you, you get some time up front. I'd say with the Infinity Train gig, they gave me you know six months up front with the creator to do visual development, which was a really big luxury and which was really amazing and awesome. And I really took advantage of that. And that really was a huge gift on that project. Um, I, I wish all projects were like that. Um, I, I love that having that uh, on the Unreal Engine project that I'm on right now, Chris Perry, um, he, uh, comes from Pixar. Um, he comes from ILM um, uh, and Blur Studios. So it's interesting in that project because it's going through a whole different process, which I feel like Unreal Engine is going to be one of these tools that, you know, whether it's TV or features, it's a total game changer. Uh, I am absolutely 100% loving how the instant gratification with it I'm, I'm used to like working on something and creating this elaborate pre-production package and then you send it off somewhere and you talk to that studio back and forth for like nine months and then you see what you set come back and with Unreal Engine I'm you know it's just all done on Slack we just communicate with each other and I do some things and then after lunch it's like bloop, there it is you know and I'm like wow, that's amazing. Like it's, it's just like that. Everything's just immediate. I, I couldn't, it's, it's mind blowing. And, and you can just put in things whenever, you know, you don't, it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't have to have like such a rigid schedule of like things that are necessary. It's the workflow is kind of like a big one giant viz dev and it just kind of moves forward. And um, so I, I think it will be interesting when that tool gets more incorporated into whether it's TV or features, because I, I do think that the workflow is completely different and it, it has an ability to, to change the, the landscape of what traditional 3D or 2D has been, so. Very cool. Uh, the next thing I'd really like to get into is because I don't think all of you just started working where you are exactly where you in the position you are right now. Um, what I would like to go maybe one by one and ask, what was your like career trajectory into getting into visual development and art direction? And then also, what would you recommend to others who also want to do that same thing? Uh, we'll start with you, Jason, and then we'll work our way around. 
Sure, yeah. Um, I get asked this a lot, and it's uh, I, I don't have a good answer um, for as far as recommendations go because I just uh, kind of um, stumbled blindly into it. Uh, I actually went to school for architecture and um, did a master's degree in that, and um, I spent seven years in London building architectural models for um, Zaha Hadid and, and Richard Rogers, and um, and then on the side was just making uh, miniature sets for some friends that were stop motion animators, and uh, and yeah, and then I don't know, uh, somehow I ended up in Los Angeles and. Uh, working on uh, miniatures for feature films and blowing them up and, you know, working on Dark Knight Rises and um, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and stuff like that and just having fun. And then uh, just always diving back into um, uh, stop motion animation just because I thought it was so fun and, and gotten more getting more into like the creative side of it and developing these worlds. And I don't know, um, I don't know, what course you would take like I get questions from students and I and I and I I, I try to be helpful but I, I don't have any real world experience of how to get um, to here and I, it was just just uh, and it, uh, so much of it is just just dumb luck too of just I mean a sweeping floors in some studio when they needed a, a hand on set and I started building with them you know just that kind of thing and I can't um, I'm maybe not a good person to give advice on how to how to get here. Yeah, I think I'm hearing just blow stuff up. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> get <yourself> a <laughs> uh, very cool. I mean, I think it's still interesting to hear how you got there. Uh, Sana, what about you? How how was your trajectory into getting to where you are now? Very similar to Jason's. Um, not in the blowing stuff up part. <laughs> just stumbling into it. And um, I always make the joke that I, you know, just assumed that cartoons were made by elves, you know, at the North Pole still from growing up. And so um, when I realized it was uh, a very thriving industry, I was very pleasantly surprised. But yeah, same, I went to school um, as a general art major uh, specializing in like portrait painting, not at all, <laughs> I really do now. And um, I think it was, yeah, I stumbled into it. I was, you know, there was a period of time where I was taking any job that was art related in any kind of way. And so, you know, looking back 20 years, I, I don't think I could have said, this is definitely going to lead to what turned out to be my career. Looking back, words, it's easier to go, oh, these were all the choices that I made. Um, but looking forward, it was just sort of being open to uh, lots of different kinds of experiences and whether it was working at an art supply store, working at a gallery or um, agreeing like, oh yeah, I'll help out on some background paintings for this cartoon. Sure, <laughs> that sounds fun. Um, and then just being lucky uh, to keep getting that work, you know, here and there and I still had all my odd jobs and then just the, the animation work was the one that was more consistently coming after a while. And then uh, I was surprised even after five, six, seven, ten years, I was like, wow, it's still coming. <laughs> like, so it's all a giant, wonderful surprise. <laughs> and I wish I could, again, say, you know, and, and sort of echo what Jason was saying. I wish I could say that there was some, you know, grand plan or, you know, way to to have figured all that out from the start. Again, I can look back and say what those choices were, but it was really just being open to opportunities as they came. Yeah, I feel like I'm noticing a pattern of just making things you enjoy and then taking opportunities where you get them. Yeah. Uh, Armand, I'm gonna jump to you and see if we can see if that trend continues or if you have a completely different story that. <laughs> do, do you mind, um, is that the question is how we get into, you know, where we are right now? Is that the question? Yeah, like how did you get to the position you're at right now? Oh, okay, so, um, well, in animation um, per se, um, I, I never intended to go into animation, you know, I'm Asian, so, you know, during the time when we were kids uh, in Asia, there's not a whole lot of opportunities in animation. So if you want to go to fine arts or anything about music, anything about arts, you know, for 
for our parents, um, it's it's uh, those are hobbies. <laughs> you know, you, you you won't be able to find a real job with that. You know, be a doctor, be an engineer, be a, an architect. So, <laughs> so uh, being a good son, I I hated that. So um, I gave up on arts, um, and I I went to college for engineering. And um, when I, so I finished it, uh, but I had a tough time, you know, I keep going back, maybe I should shift. Uh, but when I had to make the long story short, how I got into animation, um, my wife, uh, I met her uh, when we were in college. Um, she has a classmate whose uh, sister um, started working for Hanna-Barbera, um, which is the precursor for Cartoon Network. Uh, in, in, in during the time in, in early uh, late 80s, early 90s, uh, they started outsourcing um, Saturday morning cartoons, uh, Disney, uh, Warner Brothers, uh, uh, Marvel. <clears throat> they started outsourcing uh, work um, to Manila. So they have studios in Manila. Um, so I heard about it. She told me about it. She knows I, I love to draw and I didn't have a job at the time. So um, so I applied and um, so what they did was they, when you get in, they would give you a test, you get in and they will give you an intensive training, a six month training, I guess. They would have union people from LA come over to Manila. So I guess what they learned in Cal Arts for four years, they, they dumped it to us in, in six months. Um, then after that, you know, when you, I, I got in, I got in uh, as an in-betweener. Um, and I realized I didn't like animation, you know, animating as much. So, but I found out uh, that there's a layout department wherein we deal with backgrounds and camera mechanics and, and um, staging and all those good stuff, um, which actually I was able to practice a little bit of what I learned in college. So, so yeah, so I took that and that paved the way for me, um, you know, getting deep into animation. Then I supervised the department um, I, I get to work with a lot of union guys uh, from LA and from Europe. Um, there's, you know, so they encouraged me to go here. Uh, I came here. I mean, that that's just the shortened version, but there's a, a, a long story. I got here. Um, I took on some classes in a trade school because this is pre-online stuff. Um, then, uh, yeah, then I rebuilt my portfolio, got into Disney, and uh, that was in 1996. So yeah, so once I get in um, to Disney, um, yeah, I just, I, I stayed on. Um, I, I really made a decision that this is, this is the career of choice that I wanted to do, I guess, for the rest of my life, you know? So, so yeah, so that's how I got here. Okay, very cool. I noticed a new trend now. Do something completely different and then stumble into animation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jill, we're going to finish with you. Uh, how did you get to where you are now and um, well, what keeps you into others? The trend continues. So um, I, I grew up in Alaska and I, I really wanted to be an artist. I knew I wanted to go into art. So I came down to, um, to California. When I was in Alaska, I looked at colleges and Pepperdine looked amazing to me, right? I'm like Malibu Beach. They have these Europe programs. I'm like, I'm all over this. So. I came down to Pepperdine. I got a degree in fine art. I studied in Europe for a couple of years. I got a year in Florence, which was amazing. And then a year um, in Germany at the University of Heidelberg, which was so hard academically. I, I'm just so happy I still survived that. Um, and, uh, and so then I came to Pepperdine. I graduated from Pepperdine with a degree in fine art, but I really wanted to do something that was more group orientated. I didn't want to just be a, a painter um, in a studio. And my dad was an architect. So, and I'd always really loved architecture and I helped design our house growing up and a lot of things like that. And in high school, I was all about designing our proms and things that were in that nature. So I went to, at Art Center, I, I studied environmental design and illustration because they didn't have any kind of animation back then. And so, um, and so then uh, I got out and I started out in architecture. I, 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 um, I got a job in the design group at a firm um, called MCG that was here in Pasadena. And um, when I was there, I realized I just really came alive when the rendering part came. And a lot of my friends had gotten into animation 
and we'd get together and they would tell me about the productions that they were on. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I really wish I was doing that. Like, I really love how they were working with story and they were getting to draw and paint all day. And I just was not finding architecture as creatively fulfilling as I thought. And I, and I think um, for me, there was a lot of growing kind of, I was always very, very close with my father. So I think there was a lot of growing to kind of find my own voice and, and really being brave to go that way um, that happened there as well. So, um, Although my dad was very proud of me, no matter what I did, he was, he was a, he was a really awesome guy. And, uh, and so, um, so I, I, they were like, my friends were like, you know, you'd be a really great art director, you know, environment person, you have all the skills. It's just, so I did a bunch of pieces and I had different friends who were working at studios kind of like critique them for me. And, and I put together a, a bunch of work and, um, and I threw in to the mix this one piece that was uh, a rendering I was doing as a freelance rendering um, for just like a coffin and road development. It's just this weird side thing I did that was like a planned, like just Americana house, like a, just a post and beam house. I just threw that in there. I was like, well, it's an environment. And then everything else looked very much more animation driven. And friends were like, take it into Fox. You know, they're developing a whole bunch of stuff at that time. And, uh, and a lot of the people I knew were, were on The Simpsons. So I took it over to Fox and they really, they, they really liked my work and they really loved this one piece that was this house rendering. And they're like, we love this. Um, we just need it uglier. It, we're, we're working on a show. And, and, and so the next thing I know, I'm, I'm helping out like creating on King of the Hill. It was just starting and um, I'm meeting like Mike Judge and all these amazing, you know, people that were on that show. And I ran with that for two years and then I just haven't looked back since. Uh, so I think that, um, I guess, how to get into animation, um, start out doing something else. I don't know, <laughs> and you find your way. I don't know, it's funny, we all have that. Um, how did I get to be an art director was I really, uh, you know, I, I think that is, um, you know, work, work really hard. And, you know, I, I, I really like the thinking process of being an art director. I really love creating different, um, along with creating art. I, I do still think it's the architect part of me. I really love coming up with pipeline processes and, and I really love the, the whole like visioning and seeing something all the way through. So uh, I think that's a part of it. I like having a voice um, in, in, in the team. Uh, so I think, um, I think that's, uh, that's and, I, and I love just, you know, breaking down a great story. I love, um, I love coming alongside a really great story and, uh, and, and helping like create visuals for that. So that was, a real driving force for me on, on in becoming this today, what I'm doing. All right, I love that the, so far this animation talk has been, don't, <laughs> don't do it and you'll get into it. <laughs> no, um, okay, so I wanna ask this next question, which is keeping in mind the importance of working hard, how should aspiring VizDev artists work smart uh, what what do you think is uh, some things that they can do to objectively uh, view their growth and their strengths and their weaknesses? Um, I'd say the biggest thing that I've learned is uh, just being a better editor and knowing which decisions move your work forward and which ones are just lateral differences <laughs> and you can just keep changing something and the minutiae of something but it just it doesn't really move the needle forward it just kind of is just another perfectly fine version it's different but it's just sideways um and so learning how to edit is the best way for me to say working smarter <laughs> jason did you want to add on to that 
No, yeah, I I agree with that. It's I, it's so uh, every every job so different, but um, yeah, I don't know if I'm the best person to answer this question. I don't know if I work smart at all. I'm like on the computer. I come home from work and I'm on the computer till four in the morning, and then I sleep for two hours and get up because I have an idea, and then work, and then fall asleep, and then I'm late for work. So I don't know if I work smart. I don't know if I figured that out yet. So. Uh, Jill, what about you? I, I love I love all those answers. Um, I think the truth is in all of it. Um, uh, smarter. Um, I think you know it's interesting. I think part of that question is really what is your definition of smart? You know, are are you trying to save time? Are you trying to make more money? Are you you know? I think that there's something about that in there. Um, I I think that. Uh, but I guess I feel like it's important as an artist to really, you know, that leads me to, I think it's important to, to think about what, what really um, makes your heart sing, you know? Um, I, I think that that's, that's a real key. Are you really financially driven? I mean, I think that we all, you know, we all have to survive. It's important, you know, to, to, to I, what we do is we get paid. So we're professionals, which that's exciting. Um, but you know, smarter yeah. for me, I think, I know I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm working the, the best I can. Um, when I stay challenged, I, I really like taking on like, uh, new projects. I like taking on different, different genres. I, I, I don't like to get pigeonholed in anything. So I'm always up for a challenge. So that for me is something that's, something that's smart for me, working smarter. Um, I, I think that I, I like being about projects that I really love the heart of the project. I really love the voice behind it. I can really fall in love with the story or characters. So for me, that's, that's working smarter. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I think, um, you know, once you, 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 you just always are kind of trying to, 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 you know, be the best artist you can be. And I, I feel like we're all, you know, hopefully still looking to, you know, come up with the best exciting lighting or new exciting things to do with color combinations or compositions or things like that. Um, I, so I think, I think trying to define what smart feels like for you is is really key and, and all that and then and then really hold on to that um can i change my answer real quick uh, um, no all answers are final i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> go ahead um yeah i just I, I just thought of something real quick um that i wanted to add because um to, i actually something that i've actually learned in my career is that i guess you could call smarter is just knowing when um, I have maybe not so much a weakness or like I see somebody else's strength and just letting them um, let their strengths sh shine. So it's just like a, I guess it was like for a couple of years, it's probably a little bit of a battle of an ego with me. But um, once I got past that, just to like um, let other people's strengths shine and help um, the visual development, you know, instead of um, trying to, Kind of gobble up everything myself and and to me that was like a that was when i learned how to work uh, a little bit smarter by um sharing the joy of creating a little bit more oh, love that. <laughs> that's yummy <laughs> that's the yummiest <laughs> armand do you want to uh oh yeah uh again maybe my, my age is catching up on me do you mind repeating the question so i'll, I'll get it yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you have any tips for uh, aspiring viz dev artists to work smarter to improve their skills? Oh, to improve the skills. I think I second every, what everyone said about it. Um, and practice. I mean, that's, you know, our, our job is skill-based. Uh, and at the same time, it's also experience-based. You know, the more that you stay in the business, um, the more that you learn how to do things. So there's not one um, there's not one formula that we would say, okay, you just do this and you would be like this. You know, things are changing. Tools are changing. The, the world is changing. Uh, 
when we, yeah, I, I like what Jill said. It depends. Um, when we say the word smart, um, it's also relative now to what the context of where we are, you know. Like in my time, there's no internet. And now there's internet. In my time, there's no lockdown. Now we are locked down. That's, you know, who would have thought that everybody now will be working from home? Like, you know, a year ago, people are asking, can we work from home? No, you have to stay in the studio. So it's it's different, you know. So being smart, I believe, is number one. Um, in, in terms of our skill, that's, that's I think, the, the number one thing is you have to uh, keep practicing, you know, hone your talent. Do not, do not try to chew what, uh, or bite what you cannot chew. Uh, stay in one style. People always ask me about that. Stay in one style and own it. And now if you have a handle of that style, then you can move on to another style. I would rather see someone who's so good in one style um, as opposed to trying to do three different styles, but they're like watered down, um, you know, uh, skill. So that's number one. Number two would be um, keep yourself. Um, um, I, I, I guess, you know, if, if you're into technology, you know, um, keep yourself in tune with what's going on also and what, what tools that we have at the moment. If, if let's say, you know, we move you know we move from the paper to tablet then you, you maybe you have to do that too uh it doesn't mean that you cannot do what you used to do uh but you have to add something in your skill set so um so yeah i think it, those those two for me would be in addition to what everybody uh, has already said very cool thank you guys so much for all that uh inspiring talk um i think this next question is directed at you, Jason, I'm sorry to single you out like this, uh, but we have a question from someone who uh, would like to do art direction for stop motions, for a stop motion show, uh, but most of their experience is only with CG um, and they only have personal experience with stop motion armatures. Is stop motion animation open to CG artists or is it like nurturing from the inside? Um, at, I mean, at a certain level, maybe. Uh, it's for, art, art direction and stop motion is a little bit different than art direction um, in other types of animation, just because um, art direction and stop motion usually has the, the knowledge of, of how to physically make everything. Um, so, you know, the production designer, like uh, in almost any realm can give you some sort of um, drawing that is the essence of, of this, um, this feature, this show and, um, and the art director has got to figure out how to make that uh, in a tangible and safe way where, you know, animators can work on a table and, and reach everything and uh, how to make it and, and understand tools and materials and the way they behave and run a whole crew of artists. Um, I'm not saying that uh, it's impossible. And, and there's, there's, there's so many different kinds of stop motion too, where, you know, there could be like lower tech stop motion or, you know, some sort of, you know, down shooter table, uh, paper stop motion where you don't need all of that know-how and an art director would be more like an art director would be on a CG show. Um, so to answer your question. Yeah, I um, think that, <laughs> thank you. I think, yeah, that, I think yeah, that answers the question. Does that answer? Yeah, I, I, I don't think, um, but I mean, you know, if, you know, anybody, you know, any, um, there's always people coming in from other other worlds into stop motion and learning it at a certain level. You, you're probably not going to walk through the door as a as an art director, um, you know, on a feature without um, previous stop motion experience. It's just the way it, um, it's the way it works. But you can you can definitely work your way up. Awesome. Um, we we hear a lot about how technology and animation changes. Uh, from your opinions, we'll go one by one on this. How do you feel how the art side of animation has changed over time? Uh, Sana, we'll start off with you. Oh, the art side of animation. Um, huh, <laughs> I feel like uh, if anything, what I've seen um, as I've been in this is seeing how the art form of animation itself um, is a lot more visible. I know that, you know, as we're all talking about how we started, at least for me, um, you know, uh, animation arts wasn't uh, something that was offered in school. And so seeing how many um, programs in schools have that 
um, and seeing how that's supported and, and just the access of how many artists that you can see who are doing work already, uh, whether they're still in school or coming straight out of it. Um, so I would say in the time that I've been in animation, um, just seeing the access to artists and their work change. Um, and then as far as the art itself, I think being centered around the technology of it has been a big shift because I started off when I was doing background painting with actual real physical paint. And so uh, I can wear nicer clothes now to work because I don't splatter on myself anymore. Um, uh, and, and there's a lot of advantages to that. In some ways it makes um, paintings go faster because you can edit things um, a lot faster, but in a lot of ways uh, it makes it harder because suddenly you have the ability to try, you know, 10 different versions of something. Um, and so not necessarily that's harder, but there's, there's uh, opportunity for more expo exploration and that can be both uh, good and something that you have to figure out how to you know, relating to my other question, how to sort of edit, edit those choices. Armand, how do you feel like the art side of animation has changed over the years? The art side of animation. Um, well, the art side of animation, you know, a lot of I mean, everything went to digital. So that's number one. But I think for our, on our end, I think that's what you meant, right? For the artist who's working on animation. Um, yeah, it's great. I mean, for just like what Sona said, you know, now I don't have to go home full of graphite on my arm because I don't have to deal with pencil. Uh, but I mean, it, it doesn't mean that we don't need to use that. Uh, I can still use it every now and then, but there's more tools. Um, it's not like you have to give up one for the other. I think you're just adding to what you have. Uh, for me, it's great. Um, for me, there are benchmarks. Um, you know, for at least for my job specifically, number one is when we move into uh, from pencil to tablet, that's amazing. I embrace that one, you know, because um, there's so much things you could use. Using Photoshop, like again, like what Sona said, I mean, I can create different variations uh, in different layers in one, you know, in, in no time, you know, as opposed if you have to do that in traditional uh, media, uh, that takes a while, so it sped up the process. Um, so the tablet, Photoshop, uh, the 3D, some 3D work for me. Uh, and, and recently, uh, virtually a, a reality, you know, just the Oculus. Uh, I think it's it's a breakthrough. And that, that for me, that bridged the gap between me as an artist, as a designer, uh, and also the 3D side of things. It, it bridged the gap for me. Uh, I cannot handle wireframe, but you know, having something that I could use and design and be inside my design uh, and I could measure things and, and do it much faster that I than I would do it on a 3D software. Those are the things that excited me. Those are the things that, um, you know, as an artist made me want to wake up every day because I'm excited to, uh, to play with those uh, toys, <laughs> you know, so... So yeah, um, it helped. Those are the, uh, the the newer tools of technology that helped me a lot and gr and made me grow uh, as an artist. Um, yeah, so that's my that's my answer. Jill, same question. Mm. Um, I think that uh, you know over time we've seen uh, you know more and more and more and more and more advances. So you know more and more and more and more. Uh, different kinds of looks and different kinds of ways of doing things can evolve. And it's almost like, I feel like it's the golden age of art direction now. Like if you can dream it, there's a way to do it. You know, there, it's, it's just, you know, that said with all the technology, I think people still love like that handcrafted, you know, hand drawn, you know, I, I noticed on Instagram, you know, a lot of young artists post, you know, I did a gouache painting, this stuff's amazing, you know, and, um, you know, I, I remember, you know, the gouache painting, you know, it's, 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 it's so it's, you know, I, I kind of think that we've made a lot of changes, but yet I think it's still, 
you know, great art is, is timeless, honestly. And, and the things that go into great art, the composition, the, the lighting, the tone, the color, just, you know, creating an imagery that just makes people's hearts just, you know, just, just burst and, and, and you just go, wow, that, that is still the same. Like that doesn't change. Mm. That's, that's that sweet spot that we all, we all look for, you know, to, to, to that moment in the story where it goes, ah, and then we are all get together and come together as a team and, and just take it that much further that, that is still, you know, that, that's a constant thread. Um, as far as like, what's, I feel like has really changed in art is there's just so many different ways to get there now. You know, you can do traditional 3D, you can do 3D that looks like 2D, you can do, you know, you can do 2D, you can do harmony, you can do stop motion, you can do multi, you know, facet stop motion, you can do, you know, paper, you know, paper imagery. I just, it's, it's, it's limitless with, with what, what we can, what we can do nowadays, as far as the way technology can support us in that. So that's really cool. Awesome. And Jason, I think we'll finish this question on you. How do you feel like the art side of animation has changed over the years? Yeah, I mean, once again, I, I don't do quite as much, uh, you know, on-screen animation um, as the rest of the crew here. But even in, in our world, I mean, uh, just to, to uh, touch on what Joe was just saying, I mean, there's still, I, I'm, I'm one, you know, I, I, I grew up, um, you know, always with my graphite and my pencils. And I, I mean, I still, I feel like sitting here, I still have like all my Micron pens that like I brought and I moved here to England. I put them in the holder next to my computer. I'm like, I don't use those anymore. They just sit there and I have my Cintiq right here. And, um, and I've fully, I fully integrated into tablet drawing and Cintiq drawing and I absolutely love it. Um, and I work so much in 3D now and I model almost all my sets um, in 3D and, and Rhino and everything's to scale um, and it shows things for real. But there is, like Joe was saying, there's this thing, you know, and now I have 3D printers in the other room and I just like, I instead of designing something and printing out plans and handing them to a sculptor, I just hit print. And there is something that, people, clients sometimes definitely want to see more of that like handmade feel that's lost um, in there, unless it's like tactfully like put back in, um, in 3D, which is, is possible. But um, yeah, there's just something timeless about that handmade quality, that hand-drawn um, object. So it's, it, there's so many ways to get it back in there now. And um, yeah, there, there is so many ways to come at any one of these projects now. There's so many tools. I think it's such an exciting time. I mean, just like, I mean, you just look at like, um, you know, when I went to art school, I think there was like Photoshop existed, you know, and like I took a course, you know, it's just like what is out there now is just so amazing, um, all your options. And um, I think it's so fun to embrace it and, and keep learning, you know. Um, you know, I, I, I love the traditional idea of doing things, but um, it doesn't really make sense if you're gonna like keep up with the uh, schedule in society. I really like this new question that just came in and I want you know anyone who uh, wants to answer to go ahead and speak up, but it's basically asking uh, what do you love or what would you love to see more of as far as art and design goes in future animated productions? As artists, what do you respond to most deeply uh, when you watch your favorite new film or new series? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I assume that question's about style, but like the first thing that comes to my mind is writing and good writing, and there's no replacing good writing. And you could be working on a show and put all your heart and soul into the way it looks, and if the writing's bad, the show sucks. That's all there's to it. Yeah, <laughs> Ab absolutely. There's, yeah, it's story is like the top of the pyramid. So got to have that in, in place. Yeah, I think that's cool that you, you guys are all 
you know, work in the art department, but you're, you're still saying stories king. For sure. Yeah, yeah uh, same thing with me. I mean, it's all about the story. I mean, you can have a beautiful movie, but if the story sucks, nobody wants to watch it. Or you can have a not so big budgeted film um, and uh, you have a really strong story and maybe in terms of the art, you cannot have all the bells and whistles. But if the story was structured well, shot well, I believe the art department, they become wiser and smarter in how they do things. And, um, and yeah, uh, so, so they, they try to be the best as they could. I think that, that's more watchable for me. Uh, not because you, you know, um, since we're talking about limitations and limitless, you know, I think the absence of limitation uh, destroys uh, creativity a lot. You know, when, oh, I can do everything. I can show everything. I have to show the, the last detail of these textures because we made, we paid money for it. Uh, you know, that's, I think that's what's been going on. We can see the thread because we can have, we have 8K, you know, screens. We have to show the thread of that fabric. I think that destroys it. So that 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 we can do everything. I think it's destroying it. So um, I think if if the question is what I love to see more is I want to see not more of. I don't want to see more textures. I don't want to see more fabric. I don't want to see every bit of hair. I don't want to see um, every. I don't know particles. <laughs> I want to see art on the screen that even though it's 8K, 16K, whatever K that they're gonna have on the screens, I still wanna see a piece of art, not not, not, a, not just textures. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I wanna see a, a, a more poetic way of, of expressing the story on screen as opposed to having movies wherein you can grab this character and put it in this movie and they would blend and put that background and put it with this character and they would blend because all of them are looking exactly the same. Yeah, I think that I think you're definitely making sense based on all the comments agreeing with you and the nodding heads I see around you. I think I think that there's something to um, the art or the story. Uh, when, when, when there's a certain vulnerability uh, with the people who are writing or the artists come through, that's really where the good stuff is. So to just really be brave, you know, I think is the, is the, is the way to, the way to get to that place. So. I'd also like to see a lot more um, diverse uh, storytelling from diverse points of view and yeah, I think we there's definitely room for it. So I'd like to see more of that. Yeah. I think we can all agree with that. Um, but we are getting close to the end of the time here. I don't wanna take up your entire evening, uh, but I think I'm gonna ask you all one last question, which is what is your favorite part of production? Mm. Whoever is most excited gets to go first. People. Mm. When we get paid. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, uh, seriously. Uh, for me, it's the front end of uh, pre-production. You know, when no when you know, when I'm taking something. Um, I don't want to say creating something out of nothing, but creating something out of from the script or just, just plain words and statement and description and creating a world out of that for the first time. Once you, once, once something is just being envisioned in the mind, let's say of the director or the storyteller, then me as a production designer, I'll be able to uh, bring that into life. Um, at the beginning, that's for me is uh, the, the fun part always. Yeah, I, I'd say um, mine's kind of like that. It's just, I think everybody's touched on it a little bit. Um, it's just that time when things are blooming, you know, and um, that's, that's why I, I, we, we were all being at home and I 
went ahead and just committed to my space. And I was like, what do I want back there on my wall? And I'm like, I want big flowers, you know, cause I just, I love, I, I love it when things just start blooming and, and Jason kind of hit on it. And sometimes that blooming can be when you see somebody on your team, who's just knocking it out of the park and they've hit some place in themselves where they're just like, wow. You know, and you're just so excited for them. You're like, I love that. Run with that. Go, 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 go. Or, you know, we're all coming alongside the creator or the director and that person, like we're getting their vision and it's coming together so much that yeah, you know, I've, I've had them cry, you know, like it's, it's just, everybody's just so like, oh, it's so exciting to just see this thing just, just bloom, you know, and you're, and you're, it's, it's creating life, but it's really good. You know, you really believe in the characters. You really believe in the story. You, you, you believe in what you're, what you've got going on. And that's always like my super favorite part is I just kind of treasure those. I, I hold on to those days when, when things, when things aren't, aren't, aren't blooming so good because those days happen too. So, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I love that. I love that sense of the, Ooh, wow, we, we, we did it. And that can happen in the very beginning, you know, with the visioning, or it can be something that happens during it. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of an, as it's evolving or even at the end, you know, like when you, when you get to kind of see it all and, and everybody's hearts are just like, wow, we're all part of this. I, I love that feeling. I love that, that, that sense that we all came together and created something bigger than what individually we, we can do. So Yeah, I, I agree with all that. And I think, um, you know, to combine basically what um, Armin and, and Joe were saying, I mean, there is a there's a, a moment for me on almost every job, where, whether it's a commercial or a feature or, or episodic show where, uh, you know, I always go through this thing where I'm like, am I going to find it? You know, like, like, you know, what what are we looking for, you know, when you're starting with a bit of a blank slate? And then, uh, there's just this moment and it's not just like the first, you know, drawing your idea or whatever, but like once things are flow, like all of a sudden something clicks where it's like, like all of a sudden I feel like, yeah, I can, I did this. I am going to do this again. We're at my team. We're going to do this. Again. Like we just found it again and it's like clicking and like that moment that, you know, you found um, the language and um, I don't know, to me, it's just, I don't know if it's relief is the right word, but um just that like feeling of satisfaction of like finding um you know the right home for uh the the right language for this this particular uh project and and then from there it for me that is just like just like smooth sailing i just love it after that you know despite all of those days like you mentioned jill that you know sometimes aren't so great but like you know uh, once you're on the right path it just feels feels like you're doing what you're supposed to be doing that's beautiful. <laughs> like, uh, just like when things start to click. Uh, I, I really quickly want to go back to Sana's answer because you just gave us a one word answer, which was people, which is a fantastic answer because animation is such a collaborative medium. But <laughs> we're kind of in an interesting time right now where you can't really physically be around people. How has that affected uh, what you said was your favorite part of production? It definitely makes it harder for sure. But you know, the ways that we are still able to connect like this um, uh, it really lend to that collaborative process. And um, I'm sorry, <laughs> my automatic cat feeder's going. Um, <laughs> but just being able to be inspired by other artists, you know, and other people on the crew and um, have that camaraderie and have, um, have that going, but yeah, it's it's a tougher sort of way to connect now for obvious reasons. But um, it's still, I think, a, a part of the process that I really love. So finding it wherever we can. I love that. Um, thank you all four of you for being here and giving your fantastic answers. Uh, the comments are blowing up, saying you guys are so insightful. They're such huge fans. Uh, yeah, I, we have had we have such an amazing amount of talent in this one virtual room. So thank you all for, for coming and, and giving your answers to everyone's questions. Yeah, thanks for the great so much, thank everybody. You. Lovely. Yeah. So good to see all of you. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Bye. All right. Bye. All right. Stay safe. Weekend. Yeah, Be go safe. feed your cat. And happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs>
Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving everybody. everybody. <laughs> See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.